Hi there guys, I'm Danny, and welcome to this episode of All Monsters Go to Space. Today I'm bringing you a continuation of the Dragons of the World series. This one is about dragons from Europe, so we'll start with Greece, with Python. It was a western style dragon with wings and scales in the common style. It lives at the very centre of the earth, which was thought to be at Delphi. Apollo was this being's enemy and they fought, Apollo winning, and then he was able to take over Delphi and the oracle who resided there. Another story including this dragon being an enemy to the sun god is that Hera was jealous of Leto, who is Apollo and Artemis' mother, because she was impregnated by Zeus. So Hera sent Python in pursuit, and once Apollo was born, he swore vengeance upon the snake. Now, next up is Ladon, the guardian of the golden apples. He slept around the base of the tree in the garden of the Hesperides, and he was actually mentioned in one of the labours of Hercules, who defeated Ladon with his bow. And funnily enough, since most things seem to be connected in a lot of Grecian mythology, the very next day, Jason and the Argonauts, on their way to face a different dragon, actually passed by the body of Ladon. So speaking of which, the next dragon is Colchicos. This was the giant dragon that guarded the Golden Fleece in the sacred grove of Ares. There are a few variants on how the dragon was defeated. Some say that it was by Jason, and another that Medea put it to sleep. Then King Aetus harvested the teeth and ordered Jason to plant them in the sacred field of Ares, where they were to spring forth into a full-grown army of Spartoi. Then there was Typhon, a little rarer in appearance as he was actually serpentine. He was a giant creature who was said to be one of the deadliest. He was the offspring of either Tartarus and Gaia, Cronus or Hera, and he wished to overthrow Zeus and rule over the cosmos, but he was defeated and buried under Mount Etna. There is a debate on its appearance. Hesiod said that he had 100 heads that belched fire, and Apollodorus said he was actually a giant creature with wings or a human top half, and that he was so big his head could touch the stars. And last but not least for Greece was the Lernian Hydra, a water being who lived in the lake of Lerna. Now Hercules came along and killed him to win his second labour. This creature was said to be so poisonous that not only was his breath poisonous, his very scent was deadly. And it was actually only in later stories that it had multiple heads that could regrow after being removed. Now next up is the Wyvern. It's an unusual little creature. It had the usual dragon's wings and head and a scaled reptilian body. Here is where it differs. It actually only had two legs, no arms, and their tails end in a diamond shape. They're sea-dwelling and said to be smaller, weaker, and less magical than their dragon relatives, also less intelligent, but they were said to be more ferocious and sometimes even poisonous. Now a pretty famous one that most people may have heard of is Drummongond a son of Loki and the giant Angerboda, the second born of all three of Loki's children with Angerboda. Now whilst he was still small, Odin threw him into the ocean, and he grew so immense that he could surround the whole earth and bite its own tail. It's said though that when Jormungand releases his tail, Ragnarok will start. Another dragon from Norse mythology is Nidhogg, a serpentine being who lives beneath the world tree Yggdrasil and chews at one of its roots. Some depicted as being a serpent like Jormungand, but other images depicted as having wings. This creature also fed on the blood of the people who went to hell to cleanse them for full entry to the underworld. It would also eat the people that were sent on to Nashtrond, the oath breakers and murderers and adulterers. And another Norse being is Fafnir, the son of the dwarf king, the strongest and most fearless of all his brothers. He unfortunately touched the cursed ring of Andvari, and this curse transformed him into a dragon and so he was tasked with guarding his father's hoard of treasure. Another pretty famous dragon is the Cockatrice, a bipedal creature with a rooster's head, and it could only be born when a rooster laid an egg and was incubated by a toad, which probably explains why this creature is pretty rare. It could kill people by looking at them, even breathing near them apparently. The only creature reported to being immune is the weasel, and the only sure way to kill it was to make it look at itself in a mirror. Now a similar being to this is the Basilisk, and it's a creature that's made super famous by Harry Potter, and it's the King of Serpents, and in reverse, it is born from a toad's egg that is incubated by a rooster. Its look was also deadly, and its weakness was the odour of the weasel specifically, and it had a crown shape upon its head. In France they had La Gargouille, 
first reported in 631 to about 641 AD. The former Chancellor of the Merovingian King, Clothar II, who later became the Bishop of Rouen, he came across a dragon of a typical appearance with bat-like wings and the ability to breathe fire. This was La Gargouille. It was then dragged to Rouen, publicly burnt, and only the head and neck remained unharmed. The head was then put atop the church that had just then been built, and it was used to scare away evil. And from this is how we came to have gargoyles. So heading over to Eastern Europe now for a few dragons. We are starting off with the Sime in Russia, Ukraine, Bulgaria, Poland, Serbia, Croatia and Macedonia, but they do have different spellings. It is also described slightly differently in each country, but for the most part it has a benevolent nature, could control the weather, and was born as a snake before it became a dragon. The Smegornik had 3 to up to 12 heads and could breathe fire. The Shmu from Romania was a humanoid dragon that could create objects, mainly weapons, and it also had a bright jewel in its forehead. The Trudo Yudo was a water being who had many heads, and it was said to be the guardian of the water of life and death, and it could regrow its heads like the Hydra, and transform into the shape of a human. The Wawel dragon, or Smok Wawelewski, is from Poland. It lived in a cave on the bank of the Vistula River. The first report of this creature comes from the 13th century. The king ordered his two sons to go defeat the dragon, but it couldn't be done by hand, so the dragon had to be tricked. It's said that either the Prince of Krakus or a cobbler called Scuba had the idea to fill the calf skin with sulphur. They somehow managed to feed it to the dragon, and this caused his throat to swell up with fire and this then resulted in the creature's death. Next up is the Orcadian Storeworm. This giant serpent had foul breath and could contaminate plants and animals. It was a sea dragon who became a problem for the area's king. He offered any person his daughter's hand in marriage and a magical sword if they could defeat the dragon. Many tried, but it was a young man who was the son of a local farmer who came forward and was actually able to defeat the Storeworm. The dragon's teeth are then said to have actually formed the Orkney Isles, Shetland, the Faroes, and parts of Iceland. And an old English being was the Nucker from Sussex. It was a water-dwelling dragon and was mentioned in Beowulf. It would wreak havoc on its local areas by eating the livestock and the villagers. Now, like with most stories, each retelling could have a different ending. Some say that it was the knight errant who slew him, and another said that a cunning farmer's son, Jim Puttock, fed the Nucker a poisoned pie and then beheaded it. In the Rhone area of the south of France, they had the Drac, which was a large dragon with green skin, a forked tongue and webbed wings as it was a water dragon, but it could also do sorcery. It would invisibly walk amongst the locals in the village and take abandoned children, or when it was at home, it would actually lure people to him in his river. One specific story tells of a woman that he kidnapped to nurse his newborn son, and every night she would rub the baby dragon with a magical ointment, and then she would rub one of her own eyes accidentally. After seven years, she was returned to her family with her memory completely erased, but one day when she was out at market, she saw the dragon that she had raised, although she didn't actually remember him. He asked if she could see him as he was meant to be invisible. When she replied that she could, he took her eye and fled. The ointment had allowed her to see the creatures against their will. Now another being from Norse mythology is the Lindworm, a wingless serpent with two arms, scales, and a dragon's head. It's said that Fafnir and Nighog were actually said to be of this kind, especially Fafnir with his strong arms, and they could also be found primarily living in wells. So over in Wales, they have the red dragon on their flag, the Idregok. Legend says that it lived underground and would fight the white dragon, both representing Wales and England respectively. King Vortigern had his castle built on top of a layer without realising it, and it would keep getting destroyed every night, so he brought in someone to answer why it happened. Now this person that got brought in happened to be Merlin, and he told the king about the two warring dragons, and he prophesied that the white dragon would win, but the red will come again. In Romania, there is the Balur that was huge with fins, feet, and multiple heads, no more than twelve. It was evil and could only be vanquished by a knight, Fat Framas. In Valachia specifically, legend says that its saliva turns into precious gems. In Hungary, the scaled and winged dragon is the Sarkani. It is a being that can go between dimensions, and over time it became connected with natural phenomena. It could create tornadoes and rainstorms, 
and thunder was said to be the sound of them fighting each other. They made their dens in hollow trunks or in mountain caves. The water dragon Vishap came from Armenia. Their homes were on Mount Ararat, and they could cause eclipses, storms, and whirlwinds. The Elbogen came from Serbia, and was a many-headed man-eater, another evil one with the usual traits of high intelligence, fire-breathing, strong, magically skilled, and a treasure hoarder. Over in Austria, they had the Sulebre, another large serpent with wings that lived in caves and guarded its treasure, which were not just jewels, but were also the female forest fairies, the Xanas. It is an immortal being, but it does age, and as it does so, its scales harden and become impenetrable. They only move and leave their home to eat, and can only be defeated by getting them to eat red-hot stones or bread that's been baked full of pins. From Albania hails the bowler, another one that has multiple heads, between 7 to 12, and it's covered in a woolly hair and spits fire. It can also shapeshift into a human female, create storms and droughts, and if it's never seen by a human, it will turn into a female dragon called a Kulsheldra, or a Kulsheldi for the male. It also opens its eyes only once a year on St. George's Day. It will glance over the world and eat any person that it sees. And finally for the European dragons is the coca, or the coco for the males. These are from Portuguese legend. A shapeshifter that in any form is hideous to behold. It's said that it was a dragon of this breed that St. George actually fought. So that's it for the European dragons. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to know more about dragons, then check out my Dragons from Asia video. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like, subscribe, click the bell, and I'll see you in my next video in the comment section and on Twitter. Bye!